If you look closely, you'll see more than just ancient relics with a vacant stare. When placed in the proper hands, the mask turns into magic. I find a lot of Larry's technique is to reach in and touch that element of us that we're not aware of. It really blows the kids away. They just love watching this. Larry has a lot of him in, in every mask, and every mask has a part of them in him. It kind of integrates. He becomes the mask. Although he's used to getting loads of praise and lots of earnest questions, go ahead and call Larry Hunt of Bethlehem two-faced, and he'd find it nothing short of a compliment. In fact, this man of a thousand faces is best recognized as one of the leading masked artists on the planet. Well, did you know that we're not the only mask makers in the world? People all over the world have been making and performing with masks as far back as people can remember. But don't ever expect to see a textbook, especially when Larry talks to kids. Instead, with the zeal of Clark Kent when the world's in a panic, our masked superhero transforms himself instantly into dozens of originally conceived characters. Masks seem to... Um, um cross barriers, cross um, age lines and social lines and all lines because people can subject so much information onto the masks. They talk about the fourth wall in regular theater, that there's an invisible wall between the stage and the audience. And in my medium, it's, it's just totally justified and practically necessary to break it all the time. What began as a straightforward career as a stage actor Larry's interest in movement, mime, and a desire to create his own material eventually led to his first contact with the art of the mask. And I've been wanting to create my own material for a long time. I just didn't know how to do it. And um, I've been dabbling with writing plays or scenes. And with the masks, it just opened doors, doors of perception. I decided, I just made a literal decision if I was going to... Um, uh, stay in theater, which is a tough business anyway, and if I wanted to be an artist, and I hadn't considered myself an artist up to that point, uh, masks were a way to go. And I got play, I started teaching myself how to sculpt, and I started researching masks, and I've been doing that for the last um, 23 years. The result is his long-running one-man company he simply calls Mask, featuring dozens of ensemble players. Over the years, he's developed a repertoire of unique plays and performance pieces in which his characters appear, stories geared for a range of audiences and ages, including this recent production of Animan at the Essex Elementary School. He doesn't just perform for children. He gets behind the art itself, and he tells some of the artist's secrets. And that tape is covering a little piece of wood that I attached on the inside of my mask. So all I have to do, actually, is just grab that tape and piece of wood with my teeth. This style of mask is logically called a bite mask. Oh, mm. delicious, too. Huh? I love the way he pushes the limits. When he was a lemur, he was pushing the envelope. And adults have problems with that sometimes, but the children love it. They love to see an adult use their imagination like that. So they think they think we've all lost it in some way or another. Not unlike the mask influence characters created by Chaplin, Jim Carrey, and even Robin Williams, Larry's craft has likewise been motivated by more than just getting a laugh. Larry shapes his characters by investigating and drawing from cultures with deep mask traditions. Add to that a background in the puppetry arts he acquired at Yukon's famed program, and the results are like nothing you've ever seen. Perhaps the most unappreciated and misunderstood disciplines of the theater arts, masks date back to our earliest roots, playing a vital role in our intellectual development and belief systems. 
throughout history, uh, I believe that the mask and later the puppet, an extension of the mask, uh, became both our gods and our devils uh, in, in the early histories of humankind. Now, with the work that Larry does, he is taking that element of illusion that was so rich in the earliest days and tickling our own imaginations, the way that we as an audience see him. We tend to feel that we're a more sophisticated, educated audience. But uh, I find that a lot of Larry's technique is to reach in and touch that element of us that we're not aware of, that makes us believe in his character before we as cognitive creatures are ready to believe in it. So much of Larry's magic happens on the road with tours to China, the Caribbean, Australia, and of course throughout the United States. But the process of creating these unique characters often takes place close to home with a memory that takes shape with a handful of clay. I do this so it doesn't dry out too fast, so it doesn't um, crack. I, the next step is to pour plaster over this. And then I have to dig the clay out. When I was in the seventh grade, I was out with a friend with BB gun out in the woods in Montana. And a snowy owl came along, and we ended up killing this owl with a BB gun. It was torture. It was awful. And I felt awful doing it. And I've had tremendous guilt ever since. It was, a, it was kind of a turning point in my, as I grew up a hunter in Montana. But this was, this was a waste. And it also had a partner. And the partner, it showed me a tremendous relationship that animals have emotional on an emotional level and I don't think uh, we think about that enough what I've created is this movement piece that deals with the hunter and this is the hunter and this on the top if you look at it from the top it's, it's an owl image with the eyes mm. and the owl and this will be covered with feathers and probably leather helmet once a new character is permanently cast Larry 